Okay, so let's set the stage here. We're talking about triaging bugs in software systems. So at a very simple level, this topic comes down to the question, is your software working in the hands of your users? If your app or your game or your web service isn't working perfectly for every interaction, then it's time to think about bug triaging. For many systems, there are going to be some software bugs that are tolerable if they happen infrequently, while other bugs, if they happen even once, are critical and need immediate action. So bug triage is all about making those judgment calls quickly and accurately. So it's useful to break bugs down into three categories for our discussion today. There are those bugs that need immediate action. These are things that require some developer intervention, maybe rolling back a recent release or flipping a feature flag to get the bug out of the hands of users and get back onto a stable version of the software. There are those bugs that do not require immediate action now, but may require action in the future if they become more impactful. Let's say if they happen more frequently or affect more users. And third, there are those bugs that regardless of their frequency are safe to ignore. Of these three categories, it's really the first two that are most interesting for our purposes today. And those are the ones we're going to focus on. So when it comes to determining which category a given bug falls into, there are really two main workflows. There's what we call reactive triage and what we call periodic triage. Reactive triage is the scenario where a bug occurs or something changes with a bug frequency and it requires someone on your team to drop what they're doing and go investigate it immediately. So these tend to be bugs that are high impact or affect a critical area of your system. So some examples here might be a new bug that the system has never seen before. It might be an issue involving a bug that was previously occurring at some safe steady state frequency, but now Bugsnag has detected an anomalous spike in the frequency of that bug. Could be a bug in a critical area of your system, a bug that you previously fixed that has come back now in a future release of the software, or it could be something to do with a stability score being off target for your project. And these are all concepts we'll talk about more, but the crucial point here is that a key category of bug triaging is all about reactively jumping into Bugsnag, figuring out what's going on, and making sure that some immediate action isn't needed to get a bug away from your users. So when you're thinking about reactive triage in your project and within your team, it's really important to think about which subset of your errors are going to rise to the level of importance that you want someone on your team to effectively drop what they're doing and go triage that bug immediately. Once you've made that determination, you can configure Bugsnag via the alerting and workflow engine to notify your team via team chat or via on-call alerting system whenever one of the bugs that meets your custom defined criteria occurs. So it's worth pointing out that the alerting and workflow engine is, is highly configurable. You decide when Bugsnag notifies you and through what means. Some examples of how you can use this to your team's advantage. Let's say you have a spike in errors affecting your VIP customers where you define what it means for a customer to be a VIP. Bugsnag can detect that and automatically open a PagerDuty incident for you, fitting into your team's existing on-call rotation and bug remediation process. Or let's say you work in a monolithic code base where each team works out of a different Slack channel, but ultimately you share the same code. You can configure Bugsnag to notify your Slack channel about bugs in your team's part of the monolith. And the possibilities are, are really infinite from there. So most teams aren't going to triage every single error using a purely reactive workflow. There are going to be those bugs that aren't critical enough that require people to drop what they're doing and go triage them immediately. Of course, this varies from team to team, but this is generally true. All bugs affecting your system need to be reviewed and prioritized regularly though. So an initial target that we recommend is to have your team triage your four review errors once per day. This is especially important to do first thing in the workday or after lunch, anytime where there may have been a lapse in coverage and 
new bugs may have crept in or previously triage bugs may have come back into the for review state. And we'll talk about all of that in greater detail in a moment. Let's quickly review the workflow actions available in Bugsnag. When a bug is first detected by Bugsnag, it goes into the open and for review workflow states. And we'll talk more about the for review workflow state because that's really key to triaging. So when an error is in an open error state, there are some key workflow actions you can perform on the error. And these map back to those three categories of errors we talked about at the beginning, right? things you want to fix immediately, things you may want to fix in the future, and things you're safe to ignore. So starting from uh, top left to right here, snoozing an error is something you can do to conditionally reopen an error in the future. And this is something you would do if an error is in that category where you want to keep an eye on it, but you're not going to fix it right now. And you're only going to address it if it becomes more impactful. You can create an issue to track the work related to an imminent fix of a bug. So for example, if you're using JIRA, this would be equivalent to clicking a button in Bugsnag, which will create a JIRA ticket, which will then be used in your sprint or other work, uh, work planning process to track the work of actually going in and making the necessary code or infrastructure changes to remove the bug. You can mark a bug as fixed, and this is typically what you would do for those category one bugs that you've decided to fix right now when you've taken some action to remediate the bug. And when you mark a bug as fixed, it will only return to the for, for review state if it's seen again in a future version of the code. And lastly, you can ignore an open error, which will signify that you're not planning to take any action on it, regardless of how frequently it may occur in the future. During error triage, you're typically going to be taking these workflow actions from a specific error details view inside Bugsnag. You can also take these workflow actions from the inbox view in Bugsnag, which also gives you the ability to take workflow actions on more than one error at once. We'll look at some examples of doing this in the product in just a moment. A key tip for error triaging in Bugsnag is to start your triaging workflow with the for review filter in the Bugsnag inbox. So if we look at the screenshot below, you'll see that we're viewing the Bugsnag inbox and that it's currently filtered to for review errors. And you can see this in two key places. In the filter bar, it says status for review. And in the left hand uh, column, it says for review with 18 in parentheses. And that has an active UI state. And this signifies that we're currently filtering for four review errors. There are 18 errors that need to be reviewed. And the tooltip there is giving us a hint. It says open errors that are awaiting triage. So what we need to do, if we imagine that we're on this team that's responsible for the software that's being monitored by this Bugsnag project here, what we need to do is look at every one of these errors currently affecting our users and determine its impact. And then we need to determine which of these workflow actions that we just discussed fixing, snoozing, creating an issue, ignoring, et cetera, is most appropriate given the current impact of the bug and given the current work that is on our team's plate. So let's take a look at a project in Bugsnag so we can see some of these things in action. If we go to this Photosnap Android project, have a look at the inbox, we can see that this project has quite a few open errors and notice we're filtered to errors that have occurred only in the past 30 days. So it's likely that there are even more than the 38 open errors currently affecting this project. But let's, as we said, have a look at the four review errors. So we can see in the last 30 days, there are 24 errors that are for review. So we might start our triaging here. And again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at every one of these errors in the for review set, and we're gonna figure out what the appropriate next step is each of these errors. One thing you might want to consider doing at this point is sorting the inbox either by total number of events per error. So you can see this is the error that had the most events in the past 30 days, or you could sort by users affected as well. And you can see this one affected 56 users. Uh, this happens to be an application not responding error, which is pretty severe. So let's go and take a look at that. 
So here we are on the error detail screen. This gives us a overview of all of the uh, specific information to do with this one particular defect in the application. So we can see again, this affected 56 users. It happened a total of 80 times in the past 30 days. We can go between these tabs and see more information about how those 80 occurrences are distributed across specific users. We can see which releases of the software the bug has occurred in, OS versions of end user devices, and so on. And if you're new to bug snag, it's worth pointing out that all of these we call these pivots, all the information in these pivots can be used to filter down the view of this error even more. So if we're only looking at OS version 7.1.1, that goes down to 28 events and 24 users affected. The point is you can use all of this information the bug site gives you about the frequency of the error, the specific device context in which this error has been seen, to determine the impact and to determine the next step. Once you've determined what makes sense to do for this, you'd come up here. These are the error actions that we talked about. So this is where you would create an issue. This is where you could mark it as fixed. This is where you would snooze it, ignore it. So let's say that we've just shipped a fix for this and we don't expect to see it in a future version of the software anymore. Then the next step would be to mark this as fixed. Here it's prompting us to add a comment about why we think this has been fixed. And we could say something to the effect of fixed in last release. Mark is fixed. There you go. Now you can see that it's fixed. And if we go to the comment and activity view, we can see that this was fixed. And here's my comment explaining why. So you start your triaging workflow with your four review errors. Now your goal should be to get that total number of four review errors down to zero on a regular basis. And what it means when you do that, when you achieve bug snag in box zero, it means that all of your critical bugs have been addressed. And for any lower priority bugs, you've determined the criteria at which point you will take further action on them in the future. A common question we get at this point is when will bugs ever go back into the four review state? And there are a few key situations where this will happen. The obvious one is newly introduced bugs, bugs that Bugsnag has never seen before will continue to go in the four review state for you to triage. But also any previously snoozed bugs that have exceeded their previous snooze thresholds will also go back into the four review state. And any bugs that you've marked as fixed that have happened in a new version of your software will also return to the four review state. And the reason for this is that even though you've looked at these bugs in the past, now their context has changed. They've begun uh, to happen more frequently, or they've happened in a version of your software where you're not expecting them to happen. And so in all of these cases, these are things that you want to be looking at to be determining their current impact and whether you need to take some new action based on this new information. So why aim for bug snag in box zero? Well, First and foremost, if you're regularly getting your inbox down to around zero errors for review, it means that when new errors do come in to be reviewed, your team can be more efficient with their attention. Because if you consider the case where you're not getting anywhere close to inbox zero and someone comes in to do periodic review, they may have to sift through several errors that have been given varying degrees of review already, but that's not necessarily clear because a workflow action hasn't been taken on those errors appropriately. So if you are getting to inbox zero regularly, it means that the errors that your team looks at during the triaging workflow are only those errors that need to be considered in their current context. The other thing about getting close to inbox zero or hitting inbox zero on a daily basis is that it increases the likelihood that your team's gonna be engaged with the periodic triaging process because the lower that number is that's for review, the closer to zero, the more likely people are to want to get that down to zero. You know, you consider the case of 1,000 errors to review versus five errors to review. One is much more inviting than the other as far as, you know, someone on the team wanting to go in and do the necessary work to get those errors triaged. So try to hit inbox zero every day. It's going to make your team more engaged. It's going to allow them to spend time in bug snag efficiently.